<laughs> oh no! What are you doing? So, I love my robot vacuum because 99% of the time it is doing its cleaning job without a problem. But recently I noticed that sometimes the robot seems to have problems with one of its wheels. Meaning it can only spin around in circles getting nowhere. After resetting the robot though, everything once again works perfectly fine. But here is the big problem. Usually when this happens only one tiny spot is left to clean. And even though my vacuum app does come with an option to clean a custom area, I would rather love to control the robot by myself. Because let's face it, this can not only be done quicker, but is also way more fun. So in this video, I will try to hack my robot vacuum to add this custom feature. And at the end, we will not only see whether it can be done, but also whether it would make sense to use for other people out there. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Keysight Technologies and their 20 minute quick guide on how to use an oscilloscope, which is not only educational, but also lots of fun. And since using an oscilloscope is a pretty essential skill, I would highly recommend checking out this free class, along with maybe one of the other 150 courses over on Keysight University that cover measuring instruments, software such as EDA, and industries like 5G, automotive and much much more. Simply click the link below to sign up. Now first off, I obviously had to take the robot apart, which meant removing dozens of screws. The first electrical thing I then came across was the battery, which we will have a closer look at later. For now though, I continued removing screws and tried taking this thing apart. It actually took me a while to realize that the top piece was clicked into place, which meant I had to use a bit of brute force, but not too much, to remove the top successfully without breaking anything. And just like that I was inside. And at this point I started to realize how much technology is crammed into this small thing. In the middle we got the main PCB with all of its connector sockets. And on the outside we got a lighter sensor to scan the area, infrared sensors, bumper sensors and position switches that notice when the robot is off the ground and if a pin is installed, a speaker, the two motors for the wheels, one pump for the wet cleaning and finally the vacuum motor. Now I feel like I missed some sensors here, but even just with this list, it is clear that there are a lot of actuators and sensors in this thing. Which brings me to my game plan on how to add custom controls. Thankfully though it initially sounded simple, because all we need is some power from the battery, the two motors from the wheels to move and the vacuum motor to obviously vacuum. So I firstly had a closer look at the battery pack, which seems to be a lithium ion one with a nominal voltage of 14.4 volts and a capacity of 5.2 amp hours. And that basically means we are dealing with 8 cells, 4 in series and 2 strings in parallel. This is important because it tells us that we are dealing with a maximum voltage of 16.8 volts and a possible minimum voltage of maybe around 12.8 volts. And when it comes to current outputs, I think we have nothing to worry about, because the battery easily powers the whole robot during normal operation. And in our custom mode, we only intend to control three actuators, which I will come to now starting with the wheel motors. After removing the cover from one of them, it was pretty easy to spot that those are small DC motors. To prove that, I followed its wire, removed it from the main PCB and then hooked it up to my lab bench power supply set to the maximum battery voltage. And as you can see, the wheel rotates perfectly fine. And of course, in both directions by simply reversing the applied voltage. What was also worthy to write down was the maximum current draw of one motor, which was around 250 milliamps. 
these current and voltage information of course directly determine what kind of H-bridge motor controller we can use for our modification. Which in case you do not know, lets the motor rotate in both directions depending on what control input voltage gets applied. So I did a bit of research on the internet and pretty much only found this one readily available motor driver that should be compatible. And after doing a short test with it, it seems to work perfectly fine for our application. So after reassembling everything, it was time to get control of the vacuum motor. And I of course saved the most difficult part for last. Because this is not a DC motor, but instead a BLDC motor. The reason why they use such a motor type here is because it has to reach a way higher rotation speed to get any useful wind speed going, so that the vacuum function basically works. And if you watched my previous videos about BLDC motors, then you should know that they are not as simple to control as DC motors. So I was happy to see that the BLDC driver electronics are apparently attached to the motor, and the main PCB of the robot probably only sends over simple commands to activate it. To confirm that though, I had to get the vacuum motor spinning while simultaneously having a look at its 5 pins with my oscilloscope. And yes, I definitely had to go through this reverse engineering process, because there was no detailed information about this motor available on the internet. But luckily for me, it was quite simple beginning with the first pin which is the battery voltage and the next one is ground. The last pin simply connects to 3.3 volts as soon as the motor starts up, which led me to believe that it is an unable pin. And the one before this pin seems to be some kind of RPM measure pin, because of its constant duty cycle but changing frequency. And last but not least, we got a pin that starts with a low duty cycle and then rises while featuring a constant frequency of around 18.7 kHz. I think this pin directly determines how fast the motor spins, because at the beginning you can actually hear it accelerate while this PWM duty cycle still increases. So all in all, we only have to control the enable and speed control pin. And for that, I built up a simple Arduino circuit whose output PWM signal will hopefully be able to do just that. But sadly, after hooking everything up, the motor initially didn't want it to spin. And it took me a while to realize that you have to pull the enable pin high after applying a PWM signal. This way, everything worked perfectly fine and it was finally time to connect all the power and motor components together and let them get controlled by a microcontroller that needs to be able to communicate with my smartphone though. For that I wanted to go with a Bluetooth connection, meaning the ESP32 was, like pretty much always, a suitable choice. So after coming up with a fitting schematic for this project, I firstly soldered all the components onto a small piece of perf board and then of course connected them to one another like shown in the schematic. As soon as that was done, I then hooked up the motors and was more or less done with the hardware, which meant it was time to watch some YouTube videos to learn about the software. And I'm not kidding here, I used the tutorial to once again get familiar with the MIT App Inventor, which I used to make my own custom app that basically sends over commands to the ESP32 when certain buttons get pushed. The ESP32 code then pulls certain pins high or low depending on what command it received, in order to move the robot and turn on or off the vacuum. So I installed the app on my phone and uploaded the code to the ESP before I powered everything with the battery and went for a test ride. And yes, the movement seems to work just fine, maybe a bit overpowered. And the vacuum function also starts up without a problem. So for me it was a big success, because like I said at the beginning, such a control scheme is not only way faster to use, but also fun. Which means the next step would have been to implement a solution to switch between normal mode 
and custom mode. And I actually ordered the components for doing just that. But after all my experiences with this robot, I have to say that this is not really easy to pull off. The big problem here is that there is absolutely no space inside the robot to place extra components. And mounting it onto it is also not possible because we would block the lighter. The next problem is that I actually fried part of my robot while making this video. Which made me realize how fragile this whole electronic system is. And thus I ultimately decided to not permanently include such a modification. And so should you. Now don't get me wrong, I still think it would be super fun and useful. But I feel like I would break my robot completely if I would continue. And thus I aborted this mission. But anyway, I hope you still enjoyed it and maybe learned something new. Let me know if you would have pushed forward with such a modification. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.